When you create a pivot table, Excel takes a snapshot of the data it is based on and stores this snapshot in a special memory subsystem called a pivot cache. This video discusses the pivot cache and some of the ways it can affect your work. The reason for a pivot cache is technical but simple. It speeds up pivot table calculations. These calculations are based on the pivot cache, not the original data source. You won't actually see the pivot cache. For example, it's not stored in a hidden worksheet or a temporary workbook in some obscure location on your hard drive. But you can be sure that it exists in computer memory. In fact, if you save a workbook that contains a pivot table, close the workbook, and then open it again at some later time, Excel will know to create the pivot cache that the pivot table is based on. There are several ways you can feel the presence of the pivot cache. First, consider the pivot table you see here based on the same online purchase data set you have seen before. Remember that the total from all purchases is about $2.6 million. I will change one of the total spent values by a huge amount. When I go back to the pivot table, nothing has changed. This is because the snapshot of the data in the pivot cache hasn't changed. It needs to be refreshed. But this is easy. I will click the refresh button on the pivot table tools analyze ribbon. This refreshes the pivot cache and the updated results appear in the pivot table. Second, each number in the pivot table is based on a subset of the data in the pivot cache. To see this subset, you can double-click any of the numbers in the pivot table. For example, I will show all the data that lead to the sum of total spent for females in the Midwest. This opens a new worksheet, which you can examine. You can then delete this worksheet without any negative effect on the pivot table. Third, it is often useful to create multiple pivot tables in a single workbook, either in a single worksheet or in separate worksheets. If these are all based on the same data set, it would be a waste of memory to have a special pivot cache for each of them. Therefore, by default, they all share the same pivot cache. As an example, I will create a second pivot table on a new worksheet. Now there are two pivot tables, but only a single pivot cache. This has some ramifications. For example, I will again change a total spent value by a huge amount and then refresh the first pivot table. But this really refreshes the pivot cache, so both pivot tables are updated at the same time. As a second example, I will add purchase date to the first pivot table. By default, it is grouped by month. To make a point, I will instead group by quarter. Now I will do the same to the second pivot table. As you can see, the field is automatically grouped in the same way, by quarter. In other words, grouping is the same for pivot tables that share a pivot cache. Finally, if you create a calculated field or a calculated item for either pivot table, it automatically becomes available for the second pivot table. I won't illustrate this here, but you can learn about calculated fields and calculated items in two companion videos in this series. Earlier versions of Excel gave you a choice of sharing or not sharing the pivot cache across multiple pivot tables based on the same data set. Now sharing occurs automatically.
However, Excel provides a legacy method for overriding this default behavior on the off chance that you really want to. This is discussed in the companion video, Avoiding Pivot Cache Sharing. Chances are that you can perform all of your pivot table work quickly and correctly and remain blissfully unaware that a pivot cache even exists. However, you will be a more intelligent pivot table user if you remember that a pivot cache is being used in the background.